tonight, arrests and injuries as asylum seekers break out of the Manus Island Detention Centre. A 90-year-old woman dead in a house fire on the state's south coast. Changes to financial planning laws are warning to consumers. And an excavator called in to help lead a horse out of water. Good evening, Juanita Phillips with ABC News. More details have emerged about a breakout from the Manus Island Detention Centre. 35 asylum seekers tore down the perimeter fence after being told they'd only be resettled in Papua New Guinea. The Australian government has ordered a review into the incident. Michael Troy has more. There are conflicting reports about what happened inside the Manus Island Detention Centre. According to the local MP, there was a brawl at the facility. Indonesia is accusing Australia of turning against it after the latest spying allegations from renegade contractor Edward Snowden. Foreign Minister Marty Natalagawa says it's mind-boggling that Australian intelligence might have spied on Indonesian trade negotiations. His latest comments, made during a visit by the US Secretary of State, add to the pressures on what the government calls our most important regional relationship. National Security Correspondent Michael Brissenden reports. A 90-year-old man has jumped from the first floor balcony of his home to escape a fire that killed his wife. Firefighters arrived at the house in the south coast town of Jeringong to find it engulfed in flames and the 90-year-old man outside badly injured. He has suffered extensive burns uh, to uh, much of his body and was transported by road to a waiting ambulance helicopter and then transferred to, uh, by air to Royal North Shore Hospital. His wife, also aged 90, didn't survive. Her body was retrieved by firefighters. Police say the cause of the fire doesn't appear to be suspicious. The corruption watchdog has heard allegations of improper conduct by a former Rail Corp executive. It's alleged that Joseph Camilleri solicited more than $1 million from fellow rail workers to fund his daughter's gambling problem. Reporter Simon Pallon was at today's inquiry. He joins us now. Simon, what's the background to this case? Well, Anita, until early last year, Joseph Camilleri was the general manager of maintenance contracts at Railcorp. It was a job in which he earned more than $300,000 a year. Simon Pallon reporting there in Sydney. A man's been remanded in custody, charged with the assault that left Michael McEwen in a coma. The 20-year-old was on a curfew and banned from alcohol and licensed venues over separate offences at the time of the attack. He's accused of punching or elbowing Mr McEwen, who fell and hit his head. The state government has indicated it won't stand in the way of gas companies hiking prices by up to 20%. The Independent Pricing and Regulatory Tribunal has begun taking submissions on gas prices for the next two financial years. Gas retailers want to raise prices by between 18 and 20%. That would leave consumers as much as an extra $239 a year out of pocket. The government says the carbon tax and higher wholesale prices are to blame. On to finance now and local shares moved higher, making it seven rises out of the past eight sessions. And the Australian dollar is back above 90 US cents. Here's Alan Kohler. The All Ordinaries Index has gained 6% in eight days, largely because the profit season is turning out to be better than expected. Time for the weather now, and we've got a little bit of sunshine today, but more rain on the way tomorrow, Graham. Yes, we need, although only fairly patchy tomorrow, but there are signs that by Wednesday we should actually see some quite decent falls. Now, not only in Sydney, but across many parts of New South Wales. Now, we saw some uh, cloud lingering anywhere near the coast, or away from the coast, I should say, and that allowed the eastern temperatures to reach up to about 26 degrees, but it was cooler in the west, around about 23 to 24 degrees. Now, we do have a severe thunderstorm warning at the moment. It's for heavy rainfall for parts of the northwest slopes and plains and also the northern tablelands, particularly the area between about Inverell and Tamworth. And most of the state today recorded falls, or over the weekend, recorded falls up to an excess of 20 millimetres. We saw lighter totals, though, about the far north and the far southeast, but there is more worthwhile falls about the north from tomorrow. We could see a few thunderstorms again about the northern tableland. Now, that's a precursor to that thundery weather over the next two days. Now, Darwin recorded about 40 millimetres of rain today. Brisbane reached 34, and that made it the hottest of the capital cities. Now, a band of clouds sitting through the east is along a trough. Now, this band sitting well to the south 
is a cold front. Now that's going to drive a mid-level cold pool up towards the trough and that's going to, uh, as the two systems get closer together, it's going to deepen the trough, bringing that burst of thundery rain and showers about the northeastern third of the state. Now, the thundery weather will become more widespread through Queensland tomorrow, but falls will remain lighter for Brisbane. We've also got Darwin likely to be the wettest of the capitals. Now, as that trough deepens tomorrow, clouds going to increase. We've got mostly light and isolated showers tending to scattered further north. And they'll pretty much sit anywhere north of a line about Sydney through to Dubbo and then across to Bourke. Now through the northeast, possible showers and thunder throughout, but they're more likely around the mid-north coast and ranges, also the western hunter and the tablelands. And thunderstorms on the waters are expected pretty much anywhere from about late morning. Only isolated thundery showers on the central tableland and some late showers about the northern Illawarra. Should be mostly sunny elsewhere. We've also got winds freshening on the waters by around late morning. Now over the inland, dry and mostly sunny across the south and the west, but those scattered showers redeveloping up around the northeast inland, and we will see some thunderstorms with that as well. Now over to Sydney and lows of around 15 to 20 degrees, our top temperatures should reach about 25 to 27. Now cloud will increase during the day. We'll see some isolated light showers developing and they're likely to increase overnight Tuesday. Should be a warm, humid day. We've got light winds, but they'll freshen with some possible thunderstorms developing on the waters as well. Now as we move through the week, Wednesday likely to be the wettest of the days. A burst of sunny conditions on Thursday, but then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Fairly cloudy conditions, but any of the showers in association with that uh, weather really, we need to only expect it to be light and fairly patchy. Okay, thanks for that, Graham. And that is ABC News for this Monday. Coming up on 7:30, warnings about a controversial new self-defence street fighting technique. That's next.